So let's look at a, a simple grip break for gi and no gi. And let's also toss in a wrist lock just for the heck of it. So she gets a standard grip on my sleeve. This is so easy to break in many ways. But one that's pretty, pretty common, but it may not be common to you, is that I'm simply going to open the mouth of my hand and grab her wrist from below. And it's really hard to hold cloth, even if she has a really tight cuff that she's pulled in here. I can pull this up and it's going to impact her enough that she lets go. In Nogi, it's the same thing. She grabs my wrist, I just open, my, open the mouth of my hand and I come underneath and it, it immediately bends the wrist. If she has 100% of her strength pushing straight down, I, I can't lift, but I can step back, which gives me an advantage on the leverage. So this is easy to break. And from here, you know, we could push around, take the back. But there's a great wrist lock that comes off of folding the wrist in this manner. And it's simply continuing to turn. Notice how I raise my elbow. So I can come straight up and just have strong structure. But as soon as I turn my elbow, now I have her wrist in more of a compromised position. And from here, I'm going to do two things. I'm going to continue rotating, but I'm also going to fold towards her body. This is called compound torque. So I turn, and then I fold towards her body at the same time. So she grabs. I can bring this to my chest, turn and fold at the same time, which causes a nice tap. She can even break this really high straight up in the air. This is like a, an old sword technique, but what I'm doing is I still maintain a strong grip at the wrist. I'm just using this hand to cause a different turn. So turn and straight in causes a very painful wrist lock known as Nikkyo or Kote Ineri, inward wrist turn. If you want to get a little fancy, you can make this a uh, little S turn. There's a few pressure points in here that you can attack at the same time. Thank you very much.